Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Gaming Roundup Live. The game industry loses another one, but maybe this one isn't as bad as the others. John Ricciatello, the dude in charge of Unity, when all the hubbub went down with the new terms and all of that stuff we saw a couple weeks ago, has resigned as the CEO of Unity, of the company, that's right. For those of you who may have missed the story, Unity, the makers of a very, very popular gaming engine, released an updated version of their terms that included changing, de charging developers a lot more money for installs of games made using their engine, including ones that weren't even paid for necessarily or multiple times, you get to pay for every single one of them, to the point where it would have sunk some smaller developers, which is a nightmare, because a lot of smaller developers use this engine to make their games, including some of the most popular games you've probably played. Uh, reaction was pretty much what you would expect. Uh, developers took to Twitter and other social media platforms to torch the company over this massive change. Eventually, the company had to walk back to new policies, and the CEO, John Ricciatello, got some egg on his face as well. Of course, toothpaste is hard to put back in the tube, and unease still <laughs> remains around Unity. And now, and as of now, as of today, Ricciatello has stepped down as the CEO. In a press release from Unity, quote, It's been a privilege to lead Unity for nearly a decade and serve our employees, customers, developers, and partners, all of whom have been instrumental to the company's growth. I look forward to supporting Unity through this transition and following the company's future success. You may remember Rich Atelli, or he, he was actually the CEO of Electronic Arts who uh, ruined their reputation as well. Uh, with him, he was the one who brought a ton of DLC and microtransactions to the company across multiple, multiple titles and kind of saw the decline of EA as a whole. Do you remember those times, Blizz? I wasn't born yet. <clears throat> nice. So this is about 12 years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of, this is sort of the, the birth of, li of games as a service, like live games and whatnot. And like that was really he was around when that stuff kind of started taking shape. He's a guy who likes making money somehow. So, uh, yeah, it seems like those uh, those winning values brought a bunch of pain over to Unity as well. Uh, for their for their part, Unity didn't announce a reason for his stepping down, but we can assume general villainy was the main cause here. It was just <laughs> him being kind of the devil. Uh, we'll see if this helps regain trust with smaller developers using the Unity engine. Uh, James Whitehurst will be stepping into the role as interim CEO at Unity while a permanent solution is found. He's a former IBM guy. He's been at a whole bunch of different things. So, we'll We'll see how it goes but uh that's a quick follow-up but you know ding dong the witch is dead i guess you could say <laughs> i don't know if, if there's a pile with a top hat on it or anything like she that came but. down in a bubble bro <laughs> it's the wicked witch is no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we followed up on it because, like, the Unity situation actually really is a big deal. Yeah, like, yeah. we're big fans of indie games here. So, like, to see such a crazy decision like that happen and then no, you know, follow up. I mean, I'm glad uh, something did. Happen. I mean, honestly, the fact that, you know, this was a misstep, obviously, yeah. but they walked it back and things were relatively okay. The fact that he was laid off because, or he left because of that means there's probably more stuff going on. I don't, yeah. I don't imagine that was the only bad thing he had done in the company. It's yet. the only thing <clears throat> reported. Yeah. Yeah, publicly. yeah, but I mean, like CEOs can get away with a lot of stuff before they're finally like pushed out. So, uh, you know, this is something where it's like, all right, I'm willing to bet there were other things at at play in this at this point. So, yeah, yeah, but we'll keep an eye on it, see if anything interesting happens in, while uh, Unity looks for a brand new CEO. Yeah, we could also keep talking about bad corporate. Yay. Yay, bad corporate. <laughs> bad corporate. Hey, did y'all actually know there was a game about Lord of the Rings that came out this year? No. <sighs> I was there any marketing? Was it the magic? The, was it the magic of the gathering cards? Uh, no, no. But you would think that a game focused on like Gollum, the best character in all of Lord of the Rings, would be like easy cash money, right? I prefer a Smeagol game, but uh, that's just oh, me. You know, Smeagol gang, you know. But in the right <laughs> hands, I feel like a good developer, like that's 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 easy money. I mean, you've got yeah. the rights to Tolkien, like cook. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the Tolkien IP landed in the laps of an indie studio that was a bit way out of their league, more mm. than they could have ever imagined unfortunately um the lord of the rings game Gollum came out and it was bad oh, oh. <laughs> bad yeah. uh, super bad super bad and unfortunately you know games if they're given to certain developers where they're trying to do a lot more than what they're not used to you know working out of their wheelhouse uh but they really wanted to intend to make like a triple a game and uh yeah i don't know how you're gonna make a triple a game with an indie studio um with a budget of only 15 million and a team of a massive team of 25 people uh, you're gonna really really make a difference in this lord of the rings ip no no they they didn't and it was bad it was
was super bad. Like, you know, it's bad when Kotaku describes the game as 2023's worst game. <laughs> Ooh, you don't want that title. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Again, like, they were suffering so many delays. This thing had such a rocky start. And uh, people were very, very upset. And the developers knew they done messed up because it wasn't just the game that was bad. It was the working conditions themselves. Oh. So the poor developers that have been on it are suffering with going back to the drawing board trying to figure out how to do damage control i mean like for example like one of their main issues was they couldn't get their main character to run on all fours because you know like that's part that's of not the important character. for Gollum. not nah. at all uh but i don't know how you're gonna make a good game when your conditions are booty cheeks and that's exactly what the conditions were when i'm talking about people were underpaid uh massive crunch terrible working conditions like they're saying the 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 coo ceo c suck my Oh, was being <laughs> rude and angry and literally sending home developers in tears most days oh on working on this project. Um, and there was an amazing kind of breakdown from Game 2 who uh, really kind of dissected the situation that was going on and um, tried to get statements and get to the bottom of what happened here and what caused the game to fail so hard because... When a game fails hard, you know, it's either the studio closes or there's uh, some corporate written apology saying we're going to fix it in five patches, <clears throat> cyberpunk. And, you know, we promise it'll be good. Except for okay. this studio, uh, Daedalic, they they, they, uh, they they weren't able to. They weren't able to come back strong. There was no oh. budget. There was no money. I mean, when your game gets a meta score of 34. Mm. So they closed down the entire development division uh, and their AAA team of 25 people were let go. And they put out a beautiful an apology. Uh, and by they, I mean their publisher that was written by uh, AI chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry. Hold on. Hold hold on. That's awesome. They GPT their <laughs> apology. Apology to their community for their bad game and the crunch that they put the developers on. Yeah, their publisher uh, actually did that. And uh, you want to know, you know. Wait, how did you find out? Yeah, what do you what do you think gave it away? Is my question. How do you, how do you how do you tell something's written by chat like GPT like that? Like, was it asking for uh, to rule all mankind? Was that part of the the apology? Was there yeah. was there like did it look for Sarah Connor? Yeah. <laughs> was there like <laughs> mistakes, I guess? And did it make sense? Oh, it was it, it was very bad. It's it mistakes. I feel like you it's kind of obvious when you know uh the the AI bot spells the name of your game wrong. I don't know. I'm just saying if you're going to be lazy corporate and this is why I said yay, let's talk boo corporate. You're going to be lazy corporate. At least spell check your AI, y'all. <laughs> this episode of Inside Gaming Roundup is brought to you by Shopify. Running a business can be difficult. There are so many moving parts and things to consider at one time that it can be very overwhelming. Luckily, Shopify is here to make things a bit easier. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. It puts you in control of every sales channel, so whether you're selling in person or online, Shopify has you covered. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US, which is huge. It's like 10% of the entire United States. And Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. My wife has a Shopify business. She sells candles online, and she's been using Shopify ever since she launched it, and she absolutely loves it. It's super, super great it's fun we like hearing a little ka -ching every time someone makes a sale and we can see a map and see where things are gonna go it's it's really really cool and we love it and it's made things very very easy check out katie's candles just saying so sign up today for a one dollar per month trial period at shopify.com slash inside gaming and that's all lowercase that is shopify.com slash inside gaming and get that dollar per month trial period it's pretty great check out shopify I would say, BK and Jack, you probably would say that mm -hmm. Golem and The Ring are probably iconic duos. Did you say Golem? Golem. There you go. And The Golem. Ring are probably iconic duos. Yeah, yeah, iconic duos. Okay, cool, cool. Do you have any other iconic pairs that you can think of? Uh, Jake Not and Elwood Blues. Okay. Sonic and Miles. Okay. Uh, you well, said uh, Miles. Well, just, Miles Tails yeah. Prowers is, is, is proper. Is his legal Tails, name. My guy. Uh, Mario and Luigi. Yeah. Well, what about uh, fossil but, fuels and video games? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, it was like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> a peanut butter and like, an, uh, uh, you know, a uh, duck card covered in oil. 100%. That's right, gamers. Shell, the famous gas slash oil company that we all know and love, is catching sla flack? Slack? Slack. Flack for promoting 
Fossil fuels the kids with their new uh, Fortnite campaign. But before we actually jump into details, uh, hey everyone watching this video, global warming is real. <sighs> Global so, warming so is woke. Yeah. So and woke that you would call out to, scientific facts like that. I hate like to be that. woke. Uh, in a scholarly article by the NASA, 97% of climate NASA. scientists agree that global warming is real and humans are the main contributors of it. So global warming is real. Get that through your head. Back to the T. So Shell must be the other 3% of scientists because they are reinforcing the belief that gas is good to a young audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, isn't gas a sign of a healthy body movement? You know. I see, I'm so the he's... gas that you fart is not the same gas that we use. That's, oh. <laughs> That's methane. That's... Oh. But how are they doing this? So they ended up creating a new map and mode called the Shell Ultimate Road Trip that promotes their new premium gas. In a tweet, they explain, explore our new island in Fortnite. Get ready for an adventure that is all about speed, acceleration, and performance, powered by Shell V powered. With that, whatever that little R is with a circle around the it. The registered mark, yeah. Nitro Plus Premium <laughs> Gasoline. So basically, in the game, in this map, you have to grab a car, take it to a shell station to gas it up, and you got to do like cool little stunts and stuff. And they encourage players to like screenshot gameplays and post it online to promote big oil. So there have also been a couple creators across multiple platforms who have been sponsored by Shell to promote big oil. Um, and got invited to test out the map. I'm not going to expose who these creators are, but if you really like care, you can just Google it. They're in every article because people are trying to get people to drag them. I'm not gonna drag them. It's whatever. I'm gonna figure out. Um, <laughs> also, before we roast Fortnite, I do wanna say Fortnite did not get paid for this. What? Um, they did not. Fortnite allows for any creative brand to make creative islands as long as they follow the rules about not selling certain products like guns or medicine or actively linked to other stores or something like I don't know OnlyFans or something like that. Um, so this is technically in their rules. So they so Shell didn't break anything. What? That is wild. <laughs> yeah. I think Shell expected success though with the campaign, but they were mostly met with outrage with a lot of people being like for uh Shell is it really working with Fortnite to sell big oil and all this other hate. Well, what are they selling to? What they're do you think the children have like massive like, savings that they can invest in big oil? I don't really know what the plan is. What do you think there? the kids are going to go back and be, "Mom, can you give me more V-Bucks and also invest in Shell?" Mom, can you get me a, a liter of gasoline? Yeah, uh, mom, you know, I need some. To do here. They said they said uh you, fossil fuels will fuel me, Mommy. It, I I don't understand. Do you remember when Halo did a deal with with uh was it uh, uh Mountain Dew where you could get like special codes on the Mountain Dew? Yeah. You think it'll yeah. be like that where it's like if you go to Shell and you get like a certain <laughs> gallon of gas, you'll get a code to yeah, get, to unlock a, code. You know, unlock a skin. It, unlock Fortnite. a battle pass when you go in there. Like it's it's going to be just a banana See, covered Mom, in you oil. Know, if you shop exclusively at Shell, they'll give me all the V-Bucks <laughs> that I spend and run up your credit card on. I, I mean, like, it's one of those things where honestly, they're just putting logos in kids' heads. I mean, that's yeah, why yeah. McDonald's, you see, the you see the logo when you're driving down the road. Like I could, I knew McDonald's before I could read because I knew the arches. Uh, I knew the golden arches. So you throw that logo in a video game, a kid doesn't know what it is, but it's like, oh, uh, hey, yeah. that's the thing that I see in my game. Mm -hmm. We so should go there. Work. And I can get my snacks, and you can destroy the environment. There it is. Okay, so that's that's what I'm thinking. That's a, as a cynical old man. That's that's my thinking behind it. No, well, I see it. I see it. No, that yeah. makes sense. But yeah, uh, the world's gonna like end in like 50 years. Or get something. solar if you can. Get solar. It's great. It's Go great. Green. Electric vehicles are the future. Go green. Hey, speaking of electric vehicles, let's talk about some games coming out this week. That's right. We got some up gaming, upcoming games. Some out right now. Some coming very soon. As a matter of fact, this first one came out today, October 10th. Outbuild the competition in the all new career. Race your friends in a an adjunct what adjunctated adjudicated 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 judge. Are they going to jail? What's they're getting scored. They're getting adjudicated. They got released from their parents. Multiplayer <laughs> events. <laughs> Competed over 500 cars on world famous tracks with cutting edge AI, advanced physics, and tire and fuel strategy like Shell. And Forza <laughs> Motorsport. Forza Motorsport is coming to Xbox Series X and S and PC today. <laughs> uh, Honkai Star Rail oh, is a. No. Did I not say it correctly? Honkai. Honkai. Honky. Star Rail is, is the Hoyoverse oh, space you, fantasy. You hit that. 
RPG that is finally here for PS5. <laughs> Hop abroad the Astral Express and experience the galaxy's infinite wonders filled with adventures and thrills. Players will meet new companions across various worlds and maybe even run into some familiar faces. Overcome the struggle together caused by Stellaron and unravel the hidden truths behind it. May this journey lead uh -oh. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> it, mm, Honkai Star Rail coming to PS5 today. <laughs> you didn't uh, read this part. Read that part. Anime game, yay. <laughs> game, game. Hey, embark on an adorable adventure. Discover new friends and cover everything the island has to offer. Climb, swim, glide, and slide your way into the hearts of the many different characters you meet on your travels in a little gator game. Little gator games come to the PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, PS4, Xbox One today. That's gator actually one of my favorite games. Little gator game. <laughs> that was the wrong voice. Oh, uh, Roblox is the ultimate <laughs> virtual universe that lets you create, share experiences with friends and be anything you can imagine finally makes it to PlayStation 4 debut. Jack, move your cursor. What's wrong with my cursor? <laughs> coming to PlayStation 4. Oh, it's coming to PlayStation 4 today. Yay! We can finally <laughs> play Roblox. We can play Roblox, Liz, you love Roblox. October 10th. Today. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Roundup Live. Don't forget, if you only watch us over here at YouTube, we also stream live three days a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 3 until 7 p.m. Central at twitch.tv slash Rooster Teeth. We do lots of crazy stuff over there. Blizz and BK are trying to get me canceled every single day, and you will love watching that happen. It will happen. Also, we may uh, call Minute Maid customer service lines every <laughs> now and then. It's a whole thing. Did you guys know Lemonade is actually juice? No, no, no. So, so listen here, Lemonade isn't a thanks juice. Thanks for watching, also, everyone. If you want to check us out on podcast sites. We are there too. You oh, check yeah, it out there, if you want to listen to us yeah. audio only. You can check us out where you listen to your podcast. And lemonade is definitely not a juice. Lemonade is a juice. No, it's not. Send Thanks us for watching. Out. Send Bye. us out. <laughs>